today I'm standing in front of my flow bench. Um, what a flow bench is, for those of you who, who haven't heard about this measurement tool before, I'm going to explain it in this video and for sure I'm going to explain why I'm standing with this tiny engine in front of the flow bench um, and I still owe you some shots of the dry sump system. So let's get started for today. So let's start with the easy part first. Um, I guess most of you saw the first test run I made with this uh, Toyan engine. Uh, this is a 14cc uh, four-stroke four-cylinder engine. Um, and in my eyes it's a masterpiece. It's so nicely ma made. If you're interested I made an uh, unboxing and build video and um, I showed it running already. So, But what I noticed um, when I first started it um, that it has two connections to, in the, to the crankcase um, like a crankcase ventilation so this is this one and this on the bottom and even though I only ran it for a couple of minutes um, it threw out a lot of oil so there was a, few, uh, a lot of oil underneath the engine and what I don't know is um, or what I don't want is that the engine is going to mess up um, every place I'm going to drive the car later. So I had the idea to, to build some kind of dry sump system, which means there will be this uh, reservoir, um, there will be an electric pump, an Arduino Nano microprocessor, which is going to control everything. This is just um, a relay switch. And my plan is, uh, to attach much more um, connections to the to the to the oil pan, so there will be multiple places where where the oil uh, will be uh, sucked out from the from the pump, and it will be directed into this um, yeah separation tank and breather. So hopefully there will uh, will no be um, such a mess as in the in the first test, and this one will be blocked. So occasionally I can just um, take the oil out and um, it will be a clean, clean thing. And since the Arduino um, is, is quite uh, intelligent, I can um, control this um, with uh, temperature uh, or even throttle input. I can program time delays. So the, the programming and electronic part is some, some kind of um, difficult thing for me because I have never programmed anything like this. But as you will see in a minute regarding the flow bench, this is only the tip of the iceberg. So um, yeah, I, I made some, some uh, shots during manufacturing this. Uh, you see this is not a very complicated part, but I thought you might uh, like to see this. So here we go with the footage and afterwards we start uh, deep into the topic flow bench.
I doing with a flow winch and um, this tiny engine? Because this thing is so small, I can throw it in the opening of the big super flow, flow winch we have back there. My plan is to build some kind of multifunctional flow bench, which will help me do two things. I ordered a lot of spare parts and even more of those engines. I want to measure this, this cylinder head, because I already know that there's a huge potential in, in, in these heads. And uh, since we build um, racing cylinder heads for living, I think I kind of know uh, what to do in, in what areas and what's important. So this is the first thing. I need something to measure this stock cylinder head. I'm going to modify this and then we need to measure it again, of course. So we do a stock measurement, Just you kind of open the valves and you measure how much airflow goes through this head at a defined um, valve lift. Of course, you want to run as much or achieve as much airflow, it's simplified, but of course an engine is an air pump, as most of you have known before or heard before. So what we want is we want to pump more air through this engine. If we get more air through this engine, we can increase the amount of fuel and of course the engine's output. Additionally, my plans are to build superchargers for this for these engines but of course i don't build anything just um, by estimating so estimating won't won't help us at all so we need real hard measurement data we can rely on so that means the flow bench the, i think it will be the, the the smallest flow bench on earth it's going to get installed in this in this steel how a case i bought I already made some kind of drawings where to put which switch and um, where, where to mount the electronics inside. So at first it's going to be able to measure the smallest cylinder heads on earth. Additionally, um, it will have a connection to let me measure supercharger output. So that means we will be able to control the supercharger RPM. Uh, we are going to uh, be able to, to measure the, the airflow output. We are going to be able to measure the, the output pressure and of course um, the curve which, which uh, will be created through the both of this. Because obviously if you increase the pressure, the airflow will drop. So the result hopefully will be like a graph where you can see at how much RPM how much pressure and how much airflow will be possible. So, and if you're interested, I can show you uh, at least the parts today, which I already bought, and um, I can show you the, the layout I have in mind. Yeah, yesterday morning, my wife was so happy because she saw I ordered this industrial cordless cleaner, not knowing that this thing will never clean a single spot anywhere. So I just need this to power the flow bench. And since, since we are having to deal with the smallest cylinder heads on earth, we don't need a couple of thousand um, watts of power. Yeah. We'll need a much smaller, um, smaller um, engine. So I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to use the motor of this one uh, again. This whole unit will be driven by um, at least three microprocessors, one for, for all the sensors, measurements, one for the control of this uh, motor, one for the control of the um, supercharger drive, because this thing will also power the, the um, brushless motor, which will um, drive the supercharger to a specific RPM. We need a couple of LCD displays. To, to show which, which kind of data uh, we are having to deal with. Those are some, some adjustment um, knobs to, to adjust the power, the output power and the, the motor power for the vacuum. This is um, kind of the throttle I'm using to, um, to adjust the, the output airflow of the supercharger. 
so I can um, just block the output and see how much pressure we are going to achieve. So very cheap and and um, and easy easy piece, but uh, very important for what we are doing. All of this is just connections here and there. Obviously, this thing needs multiple power inputs, so that's what that's for. Those will be the the uh, twin carburetors, uh, which will feed this engine. In the in the future, this is just for powering the pr proposes. There will be an, a pressure sensor. Uh, these two uh, plexiglass tubing for measuring the the um, differential pressure. But once we get there and build this, this is going to get an aluminum plate in the back. But when when we get there, I will uh, get to this in more detail. So this is the plan. As you see, there are kind of hundreds of parts. Let me know in the comments if this is in, uh, of any interest for you. Um, if you ask me, this is. Uh, this is a kind of interesting journey um, because I think no one has ever done this before. Uh, maybe no one is as stupid to do this kind of unnecessary, expensive, useless, whatever stuff. By the way, this is the magic part. Um, this is the airflow sensor. Kind of expensive for such a small part and kind of um, difficult to, to run. This is uh, medical equipment so it's it's used for for helping people in, in hospitals to breathe and and uh, monitor the the amount of air they, they are getting or amount amount of uh, of uh, nitrous oxide for example again I really appreciate all your comments I, I um, like to interact with you Leave me comments, whatever you are interested in, if this is boring, whatever, um, yeah, if, if there are any questions, put them in the comments, uh, I'm pretty sure I will answer them. And let's see how far we get today and uh, see you next time. Thanks, bye bye. <laughs>